Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we are here on this beautiful Tuesday to talk a little football for you. Every so often, you can't forget that football exists during the, uh, the, the daily rigor of basketball season. I would say it's probably pretty easy to remember football exists uh, given like the, the trajectory of K-State's basketball season at times this year. And even though there's not actual games going on, we are actually getting close to seeing some Wildcats on the football field again because K-State, for the second straight year, got four players invited to the NFL scouting combine that will take place in Indianapolis. Last year, they sent four. Pretty good showing there. Uh, and they do they back it up, do it again this year. The most they, they have sent was five back in 2013, or at least the most recent uh, top total was five in 2013. So that's coming off the 2012 Big 12 champion season. So this kind of shows you the the class that K-State is in right now. And I before we even talk about the four individuals going, I think we should probably talk about Chris Kleiman and the staff being able to back-to-back year send this many guys. And maybe in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't seem like a lot, but For what K-State has been doing, it is a lot. And when you think about, okay, so the 2012 team, they sent five guys to the Combine. Now back-to-back years, you've sent four. That's a good sign moving forward for K-State football. Yeah, and it it doesn't seem like a ton, but I I, I believe it's second in the new Big 12 among teams. And TCU, I believe, had five as first. So Who wants those guys? Did (laughs) did, did, did the the scouts watch those games this year? Gee, many. I'm going to say no. Uh, but it's it's big time for K-State to bring four guys to the combine in back-to-back years. Hopefully this year you won't have the injuries that like Malik Knowles and Felix Andy DK Uzama had before they even got to the combine. So you get to see more of these guys work out because that's that's a big thing. And the interviews are also a big part of the combine. But it, it's fun to be like, oh, well, in the new Big 12, like K-State number two, and you would only expect that number to grow as the recruiting gets better. And because this staff is very, very good at developing players and who knows, you, you might get three or four next year, even. There we go. Uh, the, the mic <laughs> muted there, but it is, it is funny to think about like, You've, you've gone 4-4, four, four, and then next year, like, there is the opportunity there with the guys that have been sent. I, it's kind of dudes that are all over the board because if you look at the top end, like, it's Cooper Beebe, no doubter he's going to be there. Like, he, he could end up being a first-round pick when all is said and done. And then you have the guys on the back end that is similar to what K-State had had in past years where they're sneaking just maybe one or two into the combine where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, yeah, you may get drafted, but you may not. But it's a big deal that you're going to the combine. It gives you an opportunity. So with the way that this is set up for K-State, uh, what what's the expectation for uh, how sought after these players will be uh, for, for what they bring to the table? I mean, like like you said, I, I think that Cooper Beebe, Ben Sennett are stone-cold locks. It just depends on when they're going to go. I know that uh, Cooper Beebe didn't even go to the senior bowl because they just wanted him to work on the combine because they think that he's going to crush the combine and he didn't really have anything to really gain from the senior bowl. Uh, Ben Sennett was one of the best uh, players at the senior bowl and people kept talking about how much money he made while he was at the senior bowl because his draft stock is going to probably go through the roof and a, a good combine performance probably pushes him into this day two. I mean, the tight end class isn't great outside of the top two. So it, it's just not very deep. So if Senate has a big day at the combine and at either the Big 12 pro day or if Casey still has a pro day, if he does well there, you could see Senate make a push for the day two. Uh, KT Leviston, I think, has a shot at getting drafted. Uh, he might be one of the best testers among the offensive line because I mean he is a freak athlete. So just for him getting to go kind of shows how much teams really value him and where he sits. He was also pretty good in the Shrine Bowl practices and was listed as one of the top standouts. And then I, I think Khalid Duke is a, he's going to be a good tester too. You you think maybe a team takes a flyer on him late. I, I saw a mock draft that was a team-oriented mock draft, so you know you can never really trust those. 
but they had uh Khalid Duke going in the seventh round. So like it, it's possible. Like just getting to the combine is one step. And then once you're there, it's okay. Now how can we improve on where we are? I I, I do love a good team specific mock draft out there because I mean you're you're focused on the one team and there's 31 others and you're just like yeah, they, they probably do this and this like to get and then to get to the stage where you're having to project Khalid Duke uh, in your mock draft. Like that's a lot of picks to go through in your head. But I think I think you're right on that. Like I think Khalid Duke ends up looking like one of those guys that, uh, you know, if we're being honest here. Maybe maybe I don't give him enough credit, but I do think that what we got out of Khalid Duke on the field at K-State over the last two seat two, three seasons. And I know that there were injury problems that popped up was a little bit underwhelming. I, I think he underachieved slightly for what expectations grew to be. But he does seem like one of those guys that had a fine career at K-State, but there is the chance that somebody sees him and really likes him, and, and he could go and, and find himself on an NFL team fairly easily. Because like you said, the, the measurables are there for him to be a good tester. And so he's going to get that opportunity at the combine where he can go and make some hay. And it, it's crazy that like the NFL draft it just takes one team to really like you. I mean, I, I think it was uh, Tavon Rooks who randomly got drafted like the sixth or seventh round uh, to keep Casey's draft streak alive in the 2010s. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know about how you felt, but I, I didn't think that Skylar Thompson was going to get drafted and he ended up getting drafted. So it just takes one team to really like you when you're in the later rounds. And, and I mean, Brock Purdy's uh, the perfect example too of if one team really likes you, they they'll pick you in the later rounds. Well, I mean, a, another guy that I would I would throw out there that now he's all of a sudden in his ninth season in the NFL, but I I never expected Cornelius Lucas to have the NFL career that he ended up having, and he, I mean he was an undrafted guy in all this. So it happens. Uh, also, I mean, don't forget Bryce Brown, K State legend, right there. Uh, also a guy that kept the draft streak alive and and got a longer NFL career than I think his brother even, surprisingly. Uh, well, he, so. he, had a, he had a much longer and more productive NFL career than K-State career. That uh, Very <laughs> true. Uh, the only, my favorite Bryce Brown story is Mitch Fortner uh, of K-Man fame talking about how he was in New York at the time doing his internship for the Howard Stern Show. And so he made... I think there were some buddies out there with him. He made them go to the NFL draft, and they waited all day on that final cool. day until a K State guy was picked. And so they, you know, they got <laughs> the, the Bryce Brown pop, who played in like three games at K State. So uh, yeah, three pretty, games even seems like a lot. I think he may have been on the <laughs> roster for three games. I don't know. I don't know that he necessarily played. And uh, well, he, he only logged numbers in the Eastern Kentucky game, and. Uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very good there. Uh, so we've talked about some of these the, the fringe guys. So Khalid Duke, KT Leviston, uh, where I, I'm with you. I think I mean, offensive linemen, we've seen that recently in the NFL. It's like if you think there's some of there, take a flyer because you always need offensive linemen. Yes. And I, as a fan of an NFL team, know that there's nothing I love more than complaining about backup offensive linemen because they so clearly suck. And so that's why you have to load up on so many of them to hope that you hit it big. I mean, not to the same extent, but people will talk to up what the Chiefs did offensive line-wise in the draft. You've gotten more out of the guys you've drafted if you're Kansas City in their yeah. positions than what you expected. And that's why I think that's probably one of the bigger, hey, let's take a flyer on this guy thing. So you'll probably have a, a run of those, and, and KT Leviston probably makes sense. So I, I, I would assume that K-State, the bar is to get at least three drafted. As for the guys that are the top two standouts, BB and Senate, what's the expectation for those guys with how they do in Indianapolis, and then obviously what comes in April or May, whenever the draft is this year, uh, for where their positioning is? I, I think that people are going to be really surprised at how well – Cooper BB is going to test. I, I don't know if you have seen uh, some of the pictures that have came out with him working uh, with a private offensive line coach that has like the top 10 projected offensive line prospects, but he's still playing at the same weight that he played at K state, but he is a lot. He looks a lot leaner and looks really athletic. And from what has came out of his private workouts, 
they think that he's going to light up the combine, which is a good thing because a, a, a good test with him, with his tape, that could that could be the thing that sets him over the top and gets him in round one. But I, I think that day two is probably pretty safe to say right now. I, that's where it's hard, either round two or round three. Interior offensive linemen just aren't picked very often in the first round. But if there is one, I don't see why BB couldn't be the the one that goes. Uh, with Ben Sennett, he was actually the top game speed uh, tight end in the Senior Bowl, which surprised me when I when I saw that come out, that he was running, I think it was like 19 miles an hour or something like that. And he, so a good test with him. I mean, I talked about how this tight end class isn't very deep. Like the, the top two uh, with Jatavion Sanders from Texas and Brock Bowers from Georgia are elite guys. But then like after that, you, you don't really know. So if Senate can get into like that tight end three range, he, he's probably another guy that could go on day two. It feels like he might have the most to gain at yeah. the combine because of what you're saying there, where Cooper Beebe, everybody knows how good he is, but because of the position and, and the way it sets up, like there's a chance that it's out of his control. He may not be able to do anything to get into day one because of what he, what he does on the field. But and then the other guys we talked about, like they could go from undrafted to drafted or find a, a good fit. But Ben Sennett is a guy that I, you know, like I, I was looking at like ESPN had him as like the number seven tight end. Look, we know that the top two guys are like, like big time, no doubters, basically. Brock Bowers and Jatavian Sanders at Georgia and Texas are fantastic players, whatever. But behind that, like you, uh, it's tough to find a way to distinguish Ben Sennett from the other guys. And production-wise, Ben Sennett gave you a lot, and I think he showed you what he can do. So I think he's the one that where the expectations could be, hey, he's going to be a drafted tight end. I think it, like what you're saying, it, it could end up being where you're talking about him you know, maybe, maybe he he would back into to day three. But I think once it gets past like the top tier of tight ends, teams are comfortable waiting and just getting what they get. So it's probably more likely that, hey, you want some vanity and be more like a fourth rounder or find a, a better fit and get somebody that really wants you. I think that's where Ben Sennett could help himself. But I think he probably has the most to gain from what goes on in Indianapolis. I would agree. He's a guy, too, that I, I'm really interested to see where he goes. Because I think that he could be an NFL guy for a really long time if he gets into the right system. Like if he gets into like a Kyle Shanahan, use him as the H back and the tight end spot. I think that we're gonna look like 10, 15 years from now and be like, Ben Sennett was a really good NFL player. All right. Uh last question in regards to the draft for you and all the Chiefs fans out there. How many of these guys does does uh Kansas City take in the draft? <laughs> Uh, as, uh, as a selfish one, I, I hope all of them. And, and then if, uh, if Tyler Lockett gets cut on June 1st, bring him on the squad. I mean, well, let's get everybody a ring. I mean, you got to realistically though. Cause I think people are curious about this. Like of these guys, are any a realistic fit in the scenario? It could work out where, Hey, it makes sense for Kansas city to take one of the four realistically it's probably been said it I, I think that they could take him as kind of like the i mean Travis kelsey replacement well and also road. like quit just farting around with noah gray and blake <laughs> bell like how about you make your number two tight end worth a little something imagine how much better things could be for you if your number two tight end wasn't me on the field out there you know <laughs> Uh, baby kind of makes some sense uh because there's a little bit of talk of probably getting Trey Smith to move on and trade him or figure something out because of uh, Crete Humphrey's inability to snap a football, which I hear is important as a center. Mm -hmm. But during the playoff run and really all year, Crete Humphrey wasn't great snapping the ball. Cooper Beebe hasn't played center before, but I think that I think that he would be a good NFL center if somebody asked. I, uh, th that's, I think my favorite thing to come out of the Super Bowl is Mahomes <laughs> yelling at Rasheed Rice when they come over after they have to settle for the field goal. Like, 
blankety blank he rolled the ball to me like <laughs> it's just so funny because it, i mean it's it's true like the he was getting yeah. ground balls thrown to him the entire game yeah, like I don't know, like I get Rasheed Rice's complaint, but like <laughs> Mahomes had to pick the ball up and just yeet it because there was like eight seconds left. So you, yeah, I would have gone over to Creed Humphrey and if I was Patrick Mahomes and said, "Hey, you do realize that I'm junior. I'm not the baseball player, right?" <laughs> uh, so that that is funny to me. I I just uh, last year obviously it was a dream scenario for for Chiefs fans slash K State fans with Felix, and I mean, I really everybody that got drafted last year for k-state it was it was like their dream scenario the biggest anomaly of all time that it's like hey did you grow up in this area well that's who's drafting you so uh which is either a good or bad thing for these people to be that close to their family members like oh man i kind of thought you know (laughs) spent a little bit of time away from him and i I gotta come right back uh i mean and and you got felix making a play in the super bowl he worked that tackle on that on that play so it'll be interesting, and it's exciting to have this many guys in the mix for K State. Outside of guys invited to the combine, uh, are we going to have any random guys from K State picked this year that were like that guy was on draft boards? Like that's just not a a training camp invite. What's going on there? Uh, my my guess would be no. I mean, this just seems like the four guys that I think that you could point to during the season that were draft eligible at the time that declared that you're like okay that probably makes the most sense like I, i'm just trying to think of who who else like could be could be there i mean i i want to say daniel green but he is the same age that i am so I, I just don't think that a team would take a flyer on him it's uh, yeah the age thing does start to work against you uh and the injury thing too old yeah. old and hurt is not really a good combo uh for Tip- the NFL. T- typically, no. No, typically doesn't work out. So, all right. Well, that will do it for us. That's what we got for you on the four that are going to the combine for K State. Uh, I don't, I need to check the exact dates on the, uh, w- I know it starts on the last day of February. Well, next to last day, leap year. Can't forget about that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know the, the end of the exact workout days when you're going to be able to see these guys on TV. Uh, everything's on nfl network yeah so just for four days straight just only watch nfl network (laughs) and that'll that'll do it for you uh here we go uh thursday the 29th defensive linemen and linebackers so there you go khalid duke uh and then dbs and tight ends on friday and then quarterbacks are running backs on uh on saturday who cares and then offensive linemen (laughs) go on sunday so a little little good way to start March or in February by seeing uh, the cats that are going to be trying to make their name in the NFL. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching this edition of K-State Online. For more coverage of the cats, go to kstateonline.com. Just go find on three. You can go find the teams and then click on the K-State site, and uh, you'll find us there and all the information about K-State basketball and football that you want and need. So we're out of here. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.